Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, Bamboo H2D. I've had it for a little over a month. I've had a few issues, some stuff not quite right. Um, there's plenty of little details with the software that I would change to make better, to make it more functional. Um, yeah, but I won't lie. This thing is awesome. I know it's just printing parts and they've been doing that for, well, I've been doing it for 17, 18 years. Um, I started on a um, Dimension 3D printer doing ABS stuff at work about 17, 18 years ago. So I'm very, very familiar with how all this process works and I've seen this being done for a long time. So yeah, it is just printing 3D parts and it's nothing new, but when it's your printer and it's at home, and you can do this kind of accuracy and this speed, and that speed right there is slow. I mean, I've got it slowed down to about 60% of what it could do, um, but I got it slowed down because I want the quality, I want the reliability, I don't wanna abuse my printer, and I want the thing to last for a long time. So I'm okay with slowing it down a little bit and getting better parts out, you know, more consistently. Again, I've had my share, but I've been tweaking the settings on the material. This is ABS plus. Oh, let me see if I can get a spower. This is ABS plus. So I've been tweaking the settings on the material, I've been tweaking the settings on the process, both the strength, the support, brim, a handful of details, and, and I definitely am not an expert. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of settings, a lot of settings that I don't know what they are, and you could probably spend a lot of time reading and learning, trying to figure out what all those settings are but I've been able to change a handful. Like I said, temperature, the different speeds. I've turned acceleration way down, you know, from 10,000 to 6,000 or from 5,000 down to 3,000. I don't some of those numbers are just crazy. Uh, 10,000 millimeters per second, I mean, no, my printer does not need to run that fast. But uh, again, I won't lie, it is super cool to be able to see parts coming out like this and and uh, to see, yeah, that's cool. I ran, well, I ran three of these or similar parts three days ago and my supports were all over the place. Stringy, collapsing, stuff wouldn't print, both my supports and the actual parts themselves. And through changing the settings and just kind of being patient and I'm just barely moving, barely changing anything. As an example, like the flow, the flow default was set to 0.95. I changed the flow from 0.95 to one. And a few other details like that. Um, what else did I change? Temperature, extruder temperature from 265 to 268. So I raised it three degrees. And I don't have that much experience tweaking the settings. So I really didn't know if I was gonna see any kind of a change, if I was gonna have to run you know, 20 partial examples to see any kind of real significant increase or improvement. But here I am, you know, three days later, 
after I had terrible structure and terrible results. I've had some good, good results, even with ABS in the past with some other different geometry, but these particular parts just, I don't know, something about it. You know, the overhangs, that's got a, a not a, not a really steep overhang, but it's a little bit, it's significant, I suppose. Um, these parts just did not want to run. So, like I said, in the past, I really didn't tweak any settings. You know, back in the day, 17, 18 years ago, when I first started, we send data to the printer and hit the print button. Um, there were a few guys in my group that, that spent a lot of time messing around with support and going in and, and did tweak some settings. But for the most part, I really liked the idea that I didn't have to mess around with anything. I'd send the data to the printer, hit print, and the parts had come out and they were really good. You know, they weren't as accurate and as smooth as what these are. This is, uh, this is actually not 0.12, this is actually 0.16. I wish my camera would, um, would be better so you could get a better view of that. I don't know, it, it, sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. But these are one, uh, 0.16 and uh, yeah, so I just didn't know how much I needed to change the settings to get any kind of significant or any kind of an improvement at all. Sorry for the zooming in and out. I just, I like it when it's in focus and I like it when it's that camera right there. I wish I could keep it that camera. But again, just a few little details, just tweaked a, a little bit of temperature, tweaked a little bit of speed and yeah, I went from two layers on the outside to three layers, and I think that helped too. So the point of this video is if you're having trouble, you're frustrated, <laughs> I feel your pain. I mean, I've, I've been close in the last three weeks to saying, you know what, maybe it's just more than I wanna deal with and I'm just gonna, I'm not gonna do this. I'll pay somebody else to print my parts and I just don't want to have the responsibility and I just don't want to have the disappointment of parts that just never, God, I wish that camera would stay just like that. That is a good shot. That's really nice. Um, I just don't want to mess around with having the printer at home and having the failures and, but gosh, when you get it right and it does this and it's that accurate, I'd zoom in more, but I don't want to lose this camera. Um, yeah, it's cool. So again, from the very beginning, I won't lie, it is damn cool to be able to see this stuff happening like this and, and have parts really sharp and crisp. And even though these are 0.16 layer, I'd like to be 0.12. And I know these parts can be printed at 0.12 because a buddy of mine with his P1S does print with 0.12 and he makes really really nice parts but i'm going to be happy with these at 0.16 until i can progressively get a little bit better over the next couple days the next couple weeks i'm very very happy even with a very expensive h2d to be able to get parts out that look like this and to get this kind of quantity um, these six parts are coming out in about 20 hours. So I, I know a lot of guys run really, really fast and I'm sure the machine is capable of it. Um, and I can't imagine running sport mode, uh, you know, having the settings set at hundred percent and then running sport mode at 126 or the crazy ludicrous speed at 160 something. But I'm happy right here to do this. I want my printer to last for several years and I'm hoping it will. And uh, if I can keep getting parts out like this, I'm gonna be happy. So yeah, super cool. I know it's nothing earth shattering, but it's pretty satisfying and I'm really, really happy with things going on. And especially today with the success that I've had, just changing a couple settings. So if you've been discouraged, just 
hang in there, try and go back to some defaults and then just tweak the settings a little bit and maybe just one or two settings at a time and print just a portion of a part or a very, very simple, small part, you know, a benchy maybe, or even a half of a benchy until you get your settings figured out and, and, uh, yeah, you can have good success too. So hope this helps and I hope it encourages somebody and, um, yeah, plenty of things that this doesn't do. And I've got a problem with my left side extruder, that left extruder, when it is loading material, it's in the down position and there's a big gap right there up on top that filament comes out into the build area. So that's just one detail or one issue. I've, I've got a handful of things that are issues, problems, concerns that I need to work on, but I'm very happy that my parts are coming out like this and I can get a bunch of them out. And so anyway, sorry for the long video. Thanks for watching and good luck guys. my print area, 2 AMS. And I've got another light up here. I like to have a lot of light on my work area, area to work on.